Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a very recent discovery of a pretty amazing FRB, also known as Fast Radio Burst, that seems to be very different from everything else we've seen so far. So let's talk about this discovery and welcome to What The Math. Now honestly, I was pretty excited to find out something new about the mysterious FRBs that we've been seeing for pretty much the past 13 to 14 years. It's still kind of a mystery to us, we still have no idea what they are, and even though we've been seeing them pretty much everywhere around the night skies, we can't really explain them just yet. If this is your first time hearing about so-called FRBs or fast radio bursts, they are literally what they sound like. They're very fast, and they're sort of like a burst of radio energy that can only be seen in certain frequencies. And for the most part, they're really, really fast. They only last for like a few milliseconds, so it would be almost impossible to catch them with a typical handheld radio. You would have to use a very specialized radio telescope in order to record the actual burst happening in real time. Which is why it took us so long to actually detect them for the first time ever. The technology wasn't there yet. Now, we don't really know what causes them, and for most of them, we don't even know where they came from. But in most cases, really, really far away. We're talking about distances of billions of light years. And also, they all seem to be somewhat different. Some of them are really short, some of them are a little bit longer, some of them are louder than others, and some of them are repeatable and have been seen more than once from the same location. Although up to now, none of them had any patterns. And when it comes to trying to explain what's causing them, well, there are a few ideas. One of them is, of course, some sort of interaction with um, a pulsar or a neutron star that's causing some sort of a very unusual effect that we're seeing from a distance. Some scientists have even suggested that maybe it's related to some sort of a collision between two stars. And instead of a supernova, it produces a fast radio burst and could uh, potentially explain what we're seeing. Simply because it has to be a really powerful event for us to see these um, radio bursts from such a faraway distance. On the other hand, some of the theories propose that all of these effects were coming from the very powerful and very mysterious magnetars, which I've discussed in many previous videos. These are also neutron stars, but slightly different from a typical pulsar. At the same time, some scientists suggested that maybe it's an effect of a very fast spinning star. But all of this so far is not really satisfactory, and obviously the idea of aliens communicating with each other came up once or twice as well. But so far, none of these ideas really explain everything we're observing. First of all, some of these FRBs are not repetitive, meaning that a spinning star would not really explain it really well. They also seem to have slightly different features and are coming from very different galaxies, while at the same time not really possessing any features of, for example, a typical neutron star. But this new paper that just came out only a few days ago from when I'm making this video might finally help us resolve what's really happening here. Because for the first time ever, the Canadian scientists discovered that one of these FRBs has a very predictable pattern and seems to actually reoccur every 16 or so days. In other words, it has a very well-defined phase of roughly around 16 days per cycle. And this is something we've never seen before. They actually observed this unusual fast radio burst over 400 times over a period of several years, and in that period they discovered that the 16-day cycle was more or less um, easily predictable. Now, of all of the previous FRBs we've found, only some of them, I believe 10 or so, were actually repeatable. The rest only happened once. But of all of the ones discovered, only this one right here seems to be the one with the actual predictable pattern. All of the other ones happened once or twice or maybe several times but there was no pattern whatsoever. And because of this discovery, we're now a little bit closer to maybe finally solving the mystery of what's really causing these unusual flashes. But once again, not really aliens at all. As a matter of fact, um, even if you look at these predictable patterns, it's still quite obvious that these are natural signals. They're not really all exactly the same. They always have a slightly different appearance. And so these signals can only be produced by very likely a repetitive but natural source. In other words, these have no sign of artificial intelligence or some sort of artificial communication. And interestingly, these signals seem to arrive pretty much every single hour for about 4 days straight and then disappear for about 16 days and then come back again for another 4 days, which is really really strange. It's really difficult to explain right now what could cause such an unusual pattern. And one of the possible explanations here is, or are, 
two celestial bodies with an orbit of roughly around 16 days around one another. And during those four days where we see the signals, something probably happens and um, somehow manages to produce these really powerful radio signals that are visible from Earth. And then during the next 16 days, we don't get to see them because the bodies are not aligned toward our planet. So we're not entirely sure exactly what's happening here, but that's because we just don't have a theory yet, which actually reminds me of how we discovered neutron stars or technically pulsars and how back then people were also kind of not sure what they were and most importantly there was a lot of talk about extraterrestrials. The idea of a pulsar or a neutron star that sends out energy and can be seen from really far away was actually very theoretical. Even back in the 30s the scientists already believed that neutron stars could potentially exist. By the 60s, they already had actual theories formed on how we could potentially see neutron stars and how they could produce these unusual um, jets that you see right here on the screen. So all of this was already predicted theoretically, we just had to see them, but we didn't have the technology. The telescopes were just not as advanced yet. Until 1967, when the brilliant Jocelyn Bell Burner was able to finally detect the first ever pulsar. Here's the original observation from 1967 and essentially within only a few weeks they were able to connect the observation to the available theories, once and for all confirming that the neutron stars and pulsars do exist and this is exactly what they're observing. But prior to this, for I guess a few days at least, they actually refer to this as LGM or Little Green Man because when they just discovered it they didn't really know what they were looking at and it looked like a communication from an alien species. Which is kind of where we find ourselves right now with the FRBs as well. But the only problem here or the main difference here is that we don't have the theories to explain any of this. So in other words, we've almost reached something opposite of what it was like in the 60s. Our technology is really advanced, we can see things that were totally invisible to us before, something we could never even imagine, but the theories fell behind and it's very difficult for us to establish what's causing this. And I think one of the major differences or major difficulties for modern astrophysicists is that, well, there are so many papers coming out every single day that it's become almost impossible for anyone to actually catch up with everything that's being released. So trying to identify the exact explanation here would be quite a challenge. Now, luckily for us, this particular burst came from the closest galaxy to us and also a galaxy that's surprisingly similar to the Milky Way. Here's actually what this image looks like in real life and as you can see it's uh, somewhat similar in shape to Milky Way galaxy and because of its proximity we could even find a way to study it in a little bit more detail. The distance here is approximately 500 million light years away from us which is way way closer than anything else even though it does sound pretty far away. Nevertheless, this is right now our best chance to try to once and for all solve the mystery of FRBs by looking at them with everything we have and trying to discover what exactly is happening out there. Now the way that the Canadian scientists were able to discover and also analyze this particular FRB is by using the amazing Canadian CHIME telescope which honestly doesn't even look like a telescope at all, but it is a very powerful um, radio telescope that only became operational a few years ago and actually is eventually expected to discover up to several of FRBs per day. It's super super sensitive and is able to detect things we could never detect before. And thanks to CHIME, and I think that stands for Canadian Hydrogen Intensity Mapping Experiment? I might have gotten this wrong. But anyway, thanks to CHIME, we'll hopefully within the next few years be able to finally resolve the mystery of these FRBs. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, the chance of this being some sort of alien technology or some sort of extraterrestrial activity is practically null. There's almost no way that this, this is something artificial. But the chance of this being some sort of a natural, never-before-seen phenomenon that could in some way help us discover something we've never known before about, I don't know, neutron stars, black holes, maybe things like quark stars, is very high. This is probably something we just can't really imagine right now and we need a theory to try to explain what we're looking at. And just like with black holes, neutron stars, pulsars and so on, whoever is able to explain it will very likely end up with a Nobel Prize. But until we get a better idea of what exactly this is, what's causing it, where it came from, why do some of these repeat and some don't and are they all kind of similar in some way? I guess that's about it. 
But before I finish, I also wanted to thank this wonderful person whose name I think I can't really pronounce, but I think this person is from Turkey and he initially uh, sent me the article about this. And even though I did see the paper originally, it didn't really seem important until I read the article. And so thanks to him, I was able to cover this pretty quickly. And anyway, in case you didn't know, uh, one of the best ways to reach me is actually on Twitter. I use it a lot more than other social media. As a matter of fact, I almost entirely stopped using Facebook now because it just got out of control. But I also do my best to try to reply to as many comments on YouTube as I can. So if I didn't get to your comment, I'm sorry, but I'll try next time. Anyway, on that note, once we discover more about FRBs and hopefully find their origin and explain what's causing them, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. But for now, that's really it. This is probably one of the more exciting discoveries about FRBs in the last few years. So I'm pretty sure we'll hear more about this particular discovery and about these scientists. But most importantly, I really can't wait for someone to crunch the numbers and to finally identify the theory of what's causing these unusual effects. Anyway, for now, that's it. Thank you for watching. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye bye. And also consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. Either way, though, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.